Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your Edge Router X XFP with a G-Point or E-Point XFP module. For this video, I use the G010SA G-Point module from Nokia and I already made a very detailed video about that. So if you have yet to watch that video, feel free to check out the link in the video description. To get started, we will need to insert the g -Pon or e -Pon XLP module to the XLP port on your Xruter X XLP and this port is Ethernet 5. After that, connect the fiber cable usually with the SCAPC connector to the g -Pon module. And finally, connect an Ethernet cable from your PC to the port Ethernet 0 on the Xruter X to start the configuration. Before you proceed with the configuration, it is advised to perform a factory reset of the router. So in my case, I already reset the device to factory default and I won't do it again. Let's connect the power cable to the router and let's go to the PC to start the configuration. So we are in the computer and first of all, let's go to the network and internet setting. After that, go to chain adapter option. So this is the network adapter where the X router X is connected. We are going to set up a static IPv4 address for it. So the router is available as 192.168.1.1. So I will give it an IP address of 192.168.1.7 for example. So make sure the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Hit OK and OK again. Now we should be able to ping the routers as 192.168.1.1 and very good, we have the response. So let's go to 192.168.1.1 and as fans, accept the risk and continue. So by default, the login will be UBNT and then UBNT. Router is in default config. Do you want to start with the basic setup wizard? So if you are an advanced user, you can skip this part. But if you are already an advanced user, I believe you don't need to watch this video again. So I will show you the basic setup wizard to get started. So I will click yes and then internet port. So it will be Ethernet 5 because I'm using the XRP G Pond module. Alright, so the internet connection type it will be PPPoE in my case. So right here I need to fill in the PPPoE username and password. If your ISP is using VLAN, you need to take this one and put in the VLAN ID. But in my case, my ISP doesn't require VLAN, so I will skip this one. So let's go down to DNS forwarding and basically this will be where you configure your DNS server. So I'm going to use a public DNS server and I prefer a Google public DNS. And the secondary one is will be Cloudflare. All right, we only use one LAN on this router, so I will stick with this one. LAN port. So if you select Ethernet 5, which is the XRP port at your one port, then the rest of the ports will be leave for your LAN bridge or your LAN switch. So we have Ethernet 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have five ports in total. So right now we are in the address. So usually the Nokia g XRP module we have the IP address of 192.168.1.10 and if I use my LAN to have the same IP, there will be some conflict. That is why I'm going to change it to .5.1 for the router. You can see right now it is .1.1 so after this, it will become this one. For users, I will create a new username, so I will put FanTC and put in my password. Very good. So we are almost done. So let's click Apply and Apply Change. Reboot. Yes, I'm sure. 
So at this step, we can go back to the network connection, go to the interface property. Now let's change the IP address to automatic. And after that, you can leave your Ethernet cable connected to port Ethernet zeros, or you can connect it to any other Ethernet port. Alright, so after around 3 or 4 minutes, we can see that the connection is up and running. And now, let's go to 192.168.5.1 instead of .1.1. Advance and accept the risk and continue. Alright, so let's log in with the new credential. So right here, we have the XRP port up and running with the vendor in Arcatel Lucent. It is reported correctly. And usually at this step, you will need to configure your Gpon XRP module. You will need to clone the information of your original ISP provided device to the Gpon XRP module. Let's say the several number of the SLIDs or the MAC address and things like that. So actually, I already made a video about that. And if you have yet to watch this one, feel free to check the video in the video description. So now, in order to reach the Gpon XRP module, we will need to configure something. So we all know that for Nokia G010SA, it is available at 192.168.1.10. That is why we need to set up the interface, the XRP interface, to have an IP address in the same subnet. That's why I'm going to click on the config button on the address one, go down to manual define IP address, and I will put it 192.168.1, maybe three. All right, so you can see that it's like that, hit save. All right, so we need to add slash 24 at the end and hit save. So right now from the PC, we should be able to ping this IP address. So ping 192.168.1. One dot three, and we have the reply. However, we won't have any reply from the Gpon XRP module because we have yet to configure NAT. All right, so let's go to firewall NAT. Go to the NAT section and click the add short NAT rule. For description, you can put anything. I will put XRP enable for the outbound interface select. Like Ethernet 5, which is the XRP port. You can see that Ethernet 5. So for the translation, select you must create. I'm not sure how you pronounce this one, but select this one. And for the protocol, you can specify the protocol, but usually I will put all protocol. Hit save. And that's it. So right now, we should be able to ping the Gpon XRP module, and we have the reply. So very good, let's open another tab and go to 192.168.1.10. And here we are, the login portals of the Gpon XRP module. So we do see that the model is G010SA, we have the firmware version, we have the local time and uptime and thing like that. And Right now, we can see that the authenticate status is 05. And actually, you can go and check out the authenticate status right here. It states that it's 05 because previously I already configured the Gpon XRP module. So if you have yet to do that, then you can always configure it here. We have Gpon zero numbers, uh, Gpon LOID, POAM password, and a lot of things. Again, do check out my previous video for how to configure that. So we can see that the Gpon connection status is 05, which means authenticated. However, the internet connection is not up and running. It is because my ISP control the PPE section using MAC address. That's why I will need to clone or override the X router X Ethernet interface with the max address that is used by my ISP. 
So in this case, I will need to modify the MAC address for Ethernet 5. So let's go to the config tree. After that, go to interfaces. Go to Ethernet, Ethernet 5, which is the XRP port. And right here, let's put the MAC address right here. So this is the MAC address, which were used by my ISP to manage the PVE section. I'm going to click the review button, apply, and that's it. So now I'm very confident that the PPE connection is still down. Why? Because we will need to reboot the device. So let's do that together. So let's go to system right here, scroll down and hit which one? Restart. And restart. Yes, I'm sure. All right, so we can see that the interface is up and running right now. So let's refresh the page and check it out. So right now we can see that the PPE connection is up and running and we have the IPv4 from the internet service provider. So let's go and open the speed test application. We are going to have a quick throughput check. So you can see that this is a gigabit internet plan, but I only got 274 MPPS. And right here, I can see that the CPU consumption is very high during the throughput test. So I think we will need to do something further. Let's go and enable the hardware offloading to bypass the speed limit. All right, so to be honest, I'm not an expert in Edge Router or Edge OS. So let's go to google.com and search for Edge Router Hardware of Lot. And we already see this article. So let me see, let's go down and see how do we do that. So the X router X is based on MediaTek and it supports the below features. So we have breaching DPI, NAT, VLAN, GGE, PPVOE, and IPsec. All right, so a lot of things. And in order to enable hardware NAT and IPsec, we can do this thing. So let me open the LH connection to the router. So 192.168.1. 5.1 so you can use putties or cmd or any other terminal program that you prefer accept so we have a message that the boot image can be upgrade but i think i don't need to do it for now so let's just ignore this one so Basically, we need to go to the configure mode, okay? So in the configure mode, you can see that this one changed to a hash key. And now let's copy those and paste in. Hit enter. And then, I'm not sure if we have IPsec. Yes, we have IPsec. So let's copy this one. Hit enter. And lastly, commit and save. This change will take effect when the system is rebooted. So after we're done, we can hit at 6 to go to the command mode. And now let's run the reboot command to restart the router. Proceed with reboot, confirm, press enter to confirm. Now let's wait for another one or two minutes and let's try again. All right, so the router is now up and running and let's log in again. So in order to reduce the CPU consumption, I'm going to close this one. So let's have the speed test running once again. So after enable hardware offloading, we can see that the speed is now 900 and 
20 MPPS download and then it is the same for upload with the CPU is just 0% load. So we can see that by enable the hardware uploading is really have with NAT and routing. So that's we all for this video and I hope it will be useful for you. For further advanced configuration, you can refer the article from UI.com. They have a lot of user manual for actuator where you can configure everything. Beginner guide to hardware uploading to packet processing and VPN and DNS and things like that. So that is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.